Hello fellow audiophiles and music lovers. In this short movie I'm going to show you how to properly swap operational amplifiers in Burson Soloist Grand Tourer headphones amplifier. Power adapter needs to be removed prior to starting any interventions inside an electronic equipment. So I've done that already. Then I used the 2.5mm Allen type screwdriver, hex tip, to open up the aluminium case. Next logical step now is to get rid of the red nylon ties so we can remove the original V6 v wide op amps from the deep 8 sockets. I'm using for this a small wire cutter, but as you can see, it takes quite some time to get it done right. It seems that a certain amount of patience and skills could help here as well. After cutting off all the ties, it's an easy step to take the original op-amps out, just pull them off gently and voila! Extra caution is needed when the new op-amps will be installed, because the side containing pins number 1 and 8 should face the index mark from the board. Just look at the markings, having a small concavity in the middle of the drawing, and that's where the op-amp side with pins 1 and 8 should fit. Mounting the op-amps vice versa or not properly inserting all the 8 pins in the right position might damage both the op-amps and the amplifier, although several protections are in place that should prevent that, but still extra care should be taken. The new V7 Pro op-amps are fitting the deep 8 sockets from the soloist right in properly. They are not moving on the sides when I'm touching them with my finger, everything feeling more tight than it used to be with the V6 op-amp model. However, during the transportation of the amplifier, you never know what might happen inside, so adding extra protection with some nylon ties is totally recommended. I couldn't find red ones in my shelves, so I'm going to use black ones, same thickness and width, then I'll use the same wires cutter from earlier to get rid of the extra length of the new ties. Ties should be inserted under the deep 8 sockets, then tied tightly around each op-amp. Use common sense when tightening the ties, it's not complicated, just needs a bit of attention to not scratch or take apart from the board the surrounding components. While inserting the new ties around the sockets and op-amps, removing the four silent power voltage regulators might help in clearing the way. When placing the regulators back in, just take care to reposition them properly in respect with their polarity, plus 15 volts positive and minus 15 volts negative, as written on the board and on the regulators. Mismatching these regulators might, of course, cause damage to the board and to the op-amps as well, although, like I mentioned already, there are protections in place that might prevent this from happening. But still, extra attention is required. The package coming with V7 Pro op-amps contains inside a couple of gold plated deep 8 sockets and rubber or silicone o-rings. The use for these accessories is for those hobbyists that are going to use V7 Pro op-amps in their do-it-yourself electronic circuits. Before soldering the deep 8 sockets on the board, the o-ring needs to be placed first. The deep 8 socket will follow and in the end the V7 op-amp will be inserted on top and the o-ring will surround the op-amp 
but keep it there tight in place. I'm now going to use a copper board and a soldering gun right now, but I'll use a proto board to show you the usage of these O-rings. I do hope you enjoyed the information from this video. Cheers and happy listening!